When I refer to the term planning the front end, I'm really talking about what's visible to the client from the self-service portal. So basically the design aspect of what you want to display and how you want to display it in self-service. Maybe you have an existing Word doc or form that you want to recreate in self-service. Or perhaps this is a new type of request that you're trying to design from scratch. In either case, Remedy Force provides you with a variety of tools to do so. You can choose from several types of response types, such as checkboxes, text boxes, date and time fields, radio buttons, pick lists, and so on. You can also choose from different types of prompt or question properties, such as making fields required or hidden, or even conditional. You can also display important fields to the client, such as turnaround time, prices, quantity, and even allow them to add attachments. Perhaps you want to display this request definition to certain groups or accounts. Well, all of these options and more are available to you in Remedy Force when creating a request definition. Another important part of the design aspect is the order of the questions themselves. Perhaps you'll decide to make some questions dynamic, and by that I mean, based on the response from the client, additional questions may appear on the screen that weren't there originally. If this is what you want to do, make sure that those dynamic questions appear close to the original question. Otherwise, the client may not even see it or know that it's related. Of course, the name of the request definition and a good description stored in an easy to find category will aid the client in selecting the proper request. So now here's an example of how category structures and layouts can be different while still having the same exact request definition. When the request a service tile is selected, you'll see a list of categories to the right. Notice that in this example, the categories don't appear to be consistent in the way they're labeled. From a client's perspective, it looks like a mixture of departments that offer services like client services and human resources to possibly types of services like email and messaging or mobile devices. Structures like this may be a little confusing to clients it may make sense from an IT perspective, but since the majority of the folks using the portal may be clients of your organization, you may want to restructure it a little different. So now let's look at a different example. This time, when I select the request a service tile, you'll notice that my categories aren't using the standard naming convention, such as a department name or any other standard type category names. Instead, I chose to use an action. I did this because I find that it would make it easier for the client to select exactly the action that makes sense to them. And to give it a smoother feel, I chose to rename the label Categories to I Want To. So now, if a client wants to request a service, he can select what he wants to do. For example, I want to connect to the network, or I want to get IT training, and so on. Renaming the Categories label is done by editing the Remedy Force custom label. This is not something in the scope of this video, however, if you're interested on how to do that, I added the steps in the resources section at the end of the video series. Now you'll also notice that I added a dash at the beginning of each of these category names. They don't affect the design of how it's being displayed in self-service, however, it does make it easier for the administrator to group them together in the category section of Remedy Force. Because you've used a non-standard approach in the naming of these categories, and the fact that these categories are only visible in self-service, it makes it a lot easier for the administrator to segregate them from all the others. Now let's go back and drill down into one of these categories. Let's click on a range of video conference. You'll notice a few things that are different than what you would normally see. The first thing are the icons. I used a consistent type of icon image in order to keep continuity throughout all my requests. I also made sure that the icons are exactly related to what the request is for. By doing this, it is possible that the icon alone is enough to assist the client in determining what request to select. I numbered each request. Now, since Remedy Force puts the names in alphabetical order, I didn't want the cancel at the very top. I wanted the scheduling of a conference to be at the top. So by numbering them, it allows me to determine the order in which they're being displayed. I've capitalized the actual keyword or verb in this example of each request. This makes it easier for the client to properly select the request at a glance. 
Now, these are just suggestions or tips that you can use when creating your service request. It's not a requirement. It just makes things a little cleaner and easier for your clients when using the portal. And obviously, I've added a short description to each request to further assist the client in selecting the correct offering. Now, let's look at another one of these category examples. Let's look at Get IT Training. So in keeping with the continuity of my service catalog, I had used actions to determine my category name. I now use proper icons to reflect the offering, and I chose to number them as well to give me full control of the order in which they appear. However, I didn't add a description to each offering as the title of the offering itself is self-explanatory. So keeping the client's view in mind is very important when designing your service requests. Now, let's look at planning the back end of your service request, what's not visible to the client from the self-service portal. As a new Remedy Force customer, you may be very excited to start populating your service catalog with a bunch of new service requests, but there are a few key elements that you need to consider prior to creating the requests themselves. Proper planning of these key elements will help you organize your services and make it easier for you should you want to add to them or make edits to them at a later date. So here are some questions that you need to think about when planning the back end of your service request. What do I name the service and subservice? How do I select the proper category? What do I include in my templates? Do I even need templates? So let's dive deeper into each one of these key elements. So what to name your offering and service offerings? Well, as you can see in this example, I've chosen to call the service by the name of the group that offers it, Telecom. I also divided their service into two subservices or service offerings. The first one, mobile device, may include service requests that may have a cost involved, like ordering or repairing. It may also include a delivery time. They may need to order the device directly from the supplier in order to fulfill this request, so a third party is involved. Therefore, the SLA may be lengthy, perhaps five to seven business days or more. The second subservice is desktop phone. This would include service requests that may not involve a third party to fulfill, perhaps even have same day service. Now, using these same three service requests, here's a different way to align the service and service offerings. Notice that I chose not to be specific on the service name and chose a rather generic term, end user services. This will allow me to use this service over and over again for possibly several other service requests. I then focused on grouping all these three service requests in its own service offering called telecommunications. So this will not only simplify the creation of any future service requests for this provider, but will also allow me to streamline the way I create my SRDs later. So as you've seen, there are several different ways for you to name your service and service offerings. Whatever you choose, either by cost, you know, offerings with a fee versus those without a fee, or departments, you know, service name by department names, or recipients who the service offering is available for, or any other name, as long as you're consistent and follow a standard, you'll find that it'll make it a lot easier when you plan and create any future service requests. Now, let's look at the other question on our list. How do I select the proper categorization? Well, when it comes to service requests, there are two types of categorization that exist. The category that will be used to store the service request in the portal. This is the category that can be visible in self-service once the client selects the request to service tile. In our example, the category structure that we used leveraged the label that we renamed I want to. And the categories resemble an action of some sort. This made it easier for my clients to quickly select the action they want to perform without having to search for an SRD. And yes, these categories were created the same way you create any other category in Remedy Force. I went one step further and added a dash so that I can group them all together in my list. Now, this type of categorization doesn't necessarily mean this will be the category found on the ticket after it's been created. This is just an example of how you can categorize or organize the way they're being displayed for your clients in self-service. The second type of categorization is the one that will be found on the ticket once it's created. This is done when populating the required incident template that will be linked to each service request definition itself. 
Now, having the flexibility will allow you to regroup those SRs into a common category if you need to for reporting purposes, or you can do this to simply rename the user-friendly category into a more IT-oriented one. Now, finally, let's look at templates. Do you need a template, and if so, what do you include in them? Well, first of all, I'll assume you know what templates are and how to use them. For those who may not be too familiar with templates, they are used to pre-populate fields on a form in order to ensure consistency in the way information is captured, reduce the need to enter commonly used data, and allows you to preserve continuity throughout your process. And when it comes to service requests, templates are no different. Now, when you first start creating your request definition, you'll be faced with five required fields. We've already talked about what to use for the service and service offering. We just finished discussing the category to choose, but notice you'll also need two templates. One is an incident template, and the other is a service request template or request detail template. Now, once selected, these two templates will have a parent-child relationship with this request definition. This means that this particular service request will use its data along with the data outlined in the incident template to create the final service request. And we'll go through this during the creation of a service request shortly. Now, what do I include in this incident template? Well, when planning out your service request, you may come across some standard values that you want to have pre-populate on all your records. Again, fields that are hidden from the client in order to ensure consistency throughout your process. Things like impact, urgency, the queue, and or staff that's responsible to complete the service. Now, sometimes you may even want to pre-populate a description field, but more on that later. This is where you do it, on the incident template. Now, as for the service request template, after you successfully created and saved your incident template, you'll then create a template for your request detail. You'll name it, then select the incident template that you just created, and that's it. Nothing more to do. You've now just completed the creation of your two required templates. But there's more. As you know, Remedy Force allows you to use tasks in times when you need to assign work to other departments, when you need assistance to complete a ticket. Well, when it comes to service requests, tasks can also be used. As you plan your backend requirements, you may come to realize that you'll need to send tasks out to other departments in order to complete the service that was requested. So now that we're in the template area, now would be a great time for you to create those as well. Again, using these templates will facilitate the need to populate common fields and keep with your process continuity. So to summarize, planning plays a very important role in the creation of service requests. From designing the form itself in a friendly and easy to understand manner, to planning out the little things in the back end, such as what to call your service and your categories, and what to include in your templates. Now, let's apply what we've learned and let's plan for the creation of a real service request.